we'll have plenty of time for uh, any questions that you may have uh, regarding any of the material. Um, so thank you all again, and let me get started with this presentation. One second. All right, so let's see here. Oh, are you all seeing my screen? Or are you seeing my notes here? Just one second. Let me see your screen. All right, and are you seeing the, the actual presentation or the? Presentation, oh, yeah. You are, perfect, okay. Well, excellent. Well, thank you again. Really appreciate your time today. Um, again, Graham Owen with Department of Planning and Development, and we want to go over SSPA. Uh, so this is the up upcoming uh, SSPA process, which is starting up in October. So uh, for those of you that are not familiar, SSPA or Site Specific Plan Amendment, um, this is a process that provides an opportunity for the public to propose a land use change uh, or what's called a nomination to the comprehensive plan for a single site um, or a collection of parcels. So. The comp plan, as most of y'all are aware, guides land use and development decisions in Fairfax County and sets forth the community's uh, vision for the future. And so the goal of SSPA in particular is to provide the community with an active role in shaping the long term vision of Fairfax County from the get go. Uh, SSPA has been in place since 2017. Um, it actually went under uh, underwent an evaluation over the course of the past year uh, that resulted in some changes to uh, some of the submission requirements and the processes to reduce the overall timeline of the review of SSPA. Um, enhance community engagement opportunities, and also to achieve a better balance of resources um, between site-specific plan amendments and other types of long-range planning studies, such as area studies and countywide policy amendments. Um, overall, overall, though, of those of you that are familiar with kind of the 2017 uh, North County process and the 2019 South County process, um, this should look fairly uh, similar to what you've seen in the past. Uh, we've overall overarchingly retained the same structure of the process. You have a nomination phase. Uh, that leads to a screening phase, um, and that concludes with um, the adoption of a new comprehensive plan amendment work program and the review of plan amendments uh, during the evaluation phase. A um, couple of you know, kind of like big, big picture changes. One of the things that we're not doing this time around is this cycle between the North County and the South County. So we're going to do a countywide review, broader eligibility across the entire county, um, and that will take place uh, this year as well as um, we're hoping to do it once every two years. So over our, overall, the process will be uh, shorter and more frequent. Um, it'll also involve a shorter uh, one month nomination window and a four month screening phase. And then the timeline of review of the plan amendments once they're added to the work program uh, would vary. Um, so breaking this down, uh, nominations that are submitted as a part of the revised countywide SSPA process will need to meet new submission and eligibility criteria um, in order to be accepted for review. These include an illustrative concept plan, information on the development timeline, if there is one that's associated with the nomination, and the property owner's consent, that's, that's a new feature. Um, as is the current process, or the prior, uh, as was the current process, um, anyone may submit a nomination that meets the criteria, uh, but unless otherwise accepted by the board, all no nominations will need to meet that property owner signature requirement. All right, so looking at screening in particular, um, once a nomination is um, submitted, oh, let's see here. Um, once a nomination is submitted, um, they will be presented to the board via an action item. Um, so the board will have the opportunity to accept or reject individual nominations before the advance to the screening phase and before community engagement takes place. Um, this would allow the flexibility for the board, uh, for example, to accept a nomination into the process that if it doesn't meet all the eligibility requirements. Um, they could also reject nominations that are anticipated to cause community uh, concerns significantly um, if needed. Um, this action would follow an initial staff eligibility review, um, as well as discussions with individual board members on the nominations in their districts and before community engagement on the nominations. Um, regarding community engagement, this has been something that has been, we've spent a lot of time on um, as a part of the retrospective. Um, one of the kind of the key features of SSPA um, is community engagement early on. And so that remains a priority with uh, the changes that have taken place. So what we're going to be doing with this round is community engagement um, of, of community engagement is holding community meetings during the screening phase to ensure that those that live and work near the nomination sites are engaged early in the process. Um, the exact um, the exact number of community meetings won't be known until we actually get the nominations in. There may be opportunities to um, group nominations together into one community meeting if there's um, you know, kind of geographic or topical similarities. Um, we'll, we'll find we'll find out once we receive the nominations later on in September. Um, this will be an opportunity for the public to um, get an early opportunity to learn about the nominations, uh, provide comments to staff and the nominators 
about the nominations and issues that are you know, particularly relevant to the site. Uh, and then comments that are received at these meetings will be transmitted to uh, the Planning Commission. So following um, this early round of community meetings, the Planning Commission would hold a public workshop in lieu of a formal hearing. Um, and this will be open to the public, you know, members of the public can participate, uh, but it'll be a forum that's more deliberative and allows for that screen face discussion amongst the Planning Commissioners, staff, nominators, and the public um, on the group of nominations that are submitted. Rather than having a specific hearing on each nomination, this will allow everybody to look at everything in the aggregate so that we have a better sense of what should be prioritized in terms of the competence of plan amendment work program. Um, but the workshop, the result of this workshop would be, um, as is the current case, a recommendation from the planning commission on which of the nominations should advance uh, to the work program for further review. Um, again, the workshop open to the public. Um, the members members of the public can participate in that as well as in the community meetings uh, that, that would uh, take place before it. Um, and then finally, in February and March of uh, next year, the board uh, would take action on the new work program, uh, and that would be retained as a feature of the current process. And that would mark the completion of the screening phase and then uh, the beginning of the evaluation phase. So one of the a couple of things regarding the evaluation phase, this is when we have the actual plan amendment that's been added to the work program. Um, one thing that's um, that's changed as a part of the SSPA uh, retrospective is that the community engagement method and timeline for each amendment would be designed based on the unique circumstances of the study and availability of resources. So, for example, if you have a small amendment of limited scope and impact that could proceed through, uh, in some cases, established means, such as an existing land use committee, if there is one in that district. Um, or if it's a small amendment, um, limited scope, limited impact, there could be community meetings that are held to ensure that feedback uh, is received from the surrounding neighbors, those that are most familiar with the so. site. Um, in contrast, you may have some plan amendments that are more complex, that are larger geographically, uh, more complex in terms of the considerations and the policy, uh, the policy considerations. Um, you may have cumulative considerations. You might have nominations that come in, you know, that are, that are near each other. There should be a, a broader study of the area. Um, in those cases, you may have a specially appointed task force uh, that, that looks at those nominations. So um, the, the, adaptive, the adaptive nature of this um, phase is, is, a, is a key kind of feature uh, in making sure that we're using staff resources as well as the community's resources appropriately um, and uh, in response to the, the circumstances that are compelled by each amendment. One more thing regarding the evaluation phase, not every amendment will start at the same time. So once we have a sense of you know, which nominations are, are, are coming in, the timelines that are associated with the development applications that are uh, that that may be submitted with those, um, if they have one that's anticipated to go with the plan amendment, um, other factors such as community resources, staff resources, um, then we will we'll start each amendment um, once once we are once we are able to, but there won't be an exact start date for every amendment. That's that's the same for each one because we won't be using the same um, engagement method for each one. All right. So last thing about timeline. So with the countywide um, SSPA timeline. Um, we are in September now. Um, right now, we're kind of starting to advertise our nomination period, which will commence in October. Um, we're connecting the lunch and learns, also doing additional outreach um, on the nomination period to let people know about this opportunity to submit. Again, once again, anybody can submit a nomination. We just have to have the property under signature and, and you know follow the submission requirements that we have for SSBA. But it is a very open process. Anybody can participate at the earliest stage. Um, so in terms of kind of next steps, the nomination period will be open from October 3rd through the 28th, um, and then that board action item to accept or reject the nominations will take place on December the 6th. Um, so following that December 6th um, action item, the screening phase community meetings for the nominations will take place in early January, um, our planning commission workshop uh, in February, as well as the board action um, on the work program in March. And then once again, that's, this is just through screening. It's not the end of the road by any stretch of the imagination. This is just through the nomination period and the screening period. Um, but uh, following March 2023, um, the board would take action on the work program, and that's when we would commence the, the formal analysis uh, on the, the planning studies that are added as a result of screening. All right, before I dive into the kind of the next um, next part of this, are there any questions that anybody has kind of at this at this point, just generally about the process that we can answer? Connie, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, what what happens between uh, the end of October and the December sixth board actions? I mean, is is, is every single uh, application going to go before the board on December sixth to yay or nay at moving forward? Correct. Every everyone that's accepted and that's complete. So uh, basically, yeah, so how do they get accepted? How do they get accepted? Okay, all right, it's complete. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, let me... What's the acceptance that happens between October 28th and December 6th? Sure. So what you will have is in October, there's going to be that open nomination period when the nominations come in. Staff during that, that period that you're talking about between October 28th and December 6th will check to make sure that all the materials that are required for the nominations have been submitted. And so we'll, we'll go into exactly what those submission requirements are in the next section so everybody's clear on you know, what needs to be submitted. Uh, but those will include, has, has there been a, a statement of justification? Has that been submitted? Um, does it include the required site concept plan, for example? It's a completeness check by staff that just says, we have everything that we need to proceed to screening if the board decides whether you know, to accept something into the process or not. So, that's, so, that's, so uh, I, I, I'm sorry, it's just this is really important. So if I were to put in an application to uh, change the land use of my property on Lake Audubon to uh, a summer camp, as long as I had filled everything out appropriately and it was all there, on December 6th, the Board of Supervisors, the, the entire Board of Supervisors has to sit there and read my application and decide whether to let it go or not. There will be an action item. Yes. So if it's been accepted, if it's something that is complete, we've got all, all the checklist items, so to speak, they will have an action item where they decide this is something that should proceed into screening or it should not proceed into screening. So yes, they, they won't, the, there won't be a public hearing at this stage. It's an action item because it's only you know a month after the nominations have come in, but it's that early check in to see should this proceed or not. But yes, to your question, yes. Wow. Thank you. Sure. Of course. And I think I saw another hand. Mike, go ahead. Hey, Graham, thanks. Um, yeah, much appreciated for, for the lunch and learn. Uh, this is sure. good. Uh, the one question I have is, is also sort of similar to timing. Um, for certain submissions, if like, let's say you get, uh, you know, you get past the December 6 action item, uh, you know, you've got all your materials in and you get to the December 6 action item and, um, you know, you clear that hurdle. Um, you know, from there, I understand it's the you're still sort of in that screening phase. Um, at that point, I guess I'm curious in what sort of flexibility is there if if a certain nomination, like clearly, uh, like you know, almost no doubt addresses the emerging need or, or, or you know, change of circumstances, emerging need, county policies. It's like everyone thinks it's a good idea, and particularly the supervisor, I think, is the most important. Uh, person, you know, supervisor and staff both agree like, yes, this is something we should look at. I mean, does that is there an ability for that to just go ahead and start the substantive review or is that going to need to sort of wait until, you know, later in January or February, uh, knowing that it can be, you know, maybe move forward expeditiously at that point. But, you know, is there an option for that to even kind of the, the ball to get rolling on it, um, you know, even sooner? Yeah, so to, to your question of, you know, is there an opportunity to, you know, to see if something is kind of substantively, you know, something that we should look at. That's what the screening phase is for. So we won't we won't have had an opportunity for staff, for example, to evaluate the nominations until after that December 6 date has arrived and after we've been able to go out to the community and receive their their input to see if something is, you know, kind of at that point, like you've said, if you know it's it is addressing a you know an emerging need. Um, it's something that's supported by county policy. So that's what screening is here for, is to be able to have uh, the community sense and the planning commission sense of this is, you know, something that should be looked at from a policy standpoint. Uh, so once something is added to the work program, um, if it is added to the work program, that's when you'd have that opportunity to look at, you know, is this something that should be evaluated, um, you know, with you know, concurrent with a development application, or is this something that this needs to have a policy discussion before any sort of development application is submitted. Safe. So um, the process of screening is that opportunity to say, from a policy standpoint, this is something that could be looked at further um, or not. So, um, I would I would say that's that's the that's the purpose of screening. So, so basically, it's, it's um, I appreciate the clarification. Um, so essentially, it, the soon as something could really get rolling from a substantive review, you know, beyond just that initial screening, um, you know, wh whether it's a part of a, you know, sort of a, a fast track process by itself through established pro through the established land use committees or whatever, or as, as something else, that, that that wouldn't start in any scenario really until February at the best. Right. Okay. I would agree. Yep. 
Melissa Mahan had her hand up next room. Okay. Hi Go there. Ahead, um, so I wanted to follow up on, you mentioned that um, SSPAs in that evaluation phase, when it starts to have that triage, um, that they're not all, all going to have the same start date, and I know they're not all going to have the same end date. Uh, can you go into a little bit of detail about how much staff takes on at a given time? Um, for example, I know that there's going to be that triage model, so you know the more urgent, the easier SSPAs are going to come first. Um, does that mean that you know you're going to do one at a time, boom, 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 whack them out, and then take on the more difficult ones later, or is it going to be kind of a mix of prioritizing more of that urgent aspect and take care of, you know, easy and difficult at the same time, but by urgency? So that's a great question. And in terms of the, the prioritization, that is one of the things that we deal with once we receive all the nominations in to see which ones are going to be, A, which ones should be, you know, added, you know, to the work program for further review at all. Because some, some may not, you know, advance to the next stage. But then for those that do get added, you know, which ones are those priorities in terms of, you know, starting earlier. One of the things that we have on, under the old process was what you're describing, which is saying the, you know, that those, those that have kind of relatively fewer impacts, for example, smaller in scale, those are the ones that should be done quick, you know, more quickly. We had this, um, what did we call it? Uh, Mike's helping out with track. the term. Expedited track. Expedited track, thank you. So we had this expedited track, and that was something where it was like fewer, fewer impacts. I think those can proceed more quickly. That might not necessarily be the case this time around. It's going to be more adaptive. It's going to be something where we talk to the supervisors, we talk with the planning commission and community about which ones should be prioritized earlier on. So it might not necessarily be that the those that have fewer impacts would be the ones that proceed first. Um, it might be those where there's kind of an urgent need to, you know, that compels the need to look at it more quickly, um, it, either in terms of a development a development timeline um, that's that's you know anticipated to take place um, as a part of the planning study. Um, one that's more uh, that could be one that's you know more easily uh, reviewed because it has fewer policy implications. It really kind of depends on you know the circumstances of the batch of nominations that comes in. So I, I don't mean to be wishy washy, but we just don't know until we see it. <laughs> um, is my that's the best I can give you. I suppose. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Donna Jacobson. Donna, can you hear us? Come back to Donna. Uh, let's see here. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, Donna. Go ahead. OK, thank you for having this presentation, Owen. Um, sure. I was wondering with um, uh, community committees, um, when uh, the community is notified, um, how much of the community is notified, what, what area, how close to the nomination and so forth? Yeah, absolutely. So in in the past, what we've done is we've we've done notification letters, um, and those will be a usually a, a specific radius around each nomination site. Uh, we'll send those out to property owners if there's if there's renters that we you know have identified, you know people that are there's an apartment community for example, we'll notify them as well. Um, so in addition to those letters, we also post the nominations onto our track of nomination plan amendment uh, website, and so that'll take place in, in November once we've been able to you know, process the nominations and see which ones of those you know, are complete. So we'll put those on the website. So if you want to follow along and want to make sure that your, your community is, is notified, um, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. One of them is to um, sign up for a comprehensive plan amendment listserv. And so that we will blast out, you know, once the nominations are received and we have that final list, um, we will we'll send out the nominations to, um, to, to the community via that listserv. We also have the website, so folks that want to kind of check in and see where the nominations are. Uh, there will be a website that we actually have it now, but uh, it's not populated with any information because we haven't received the nominations yet. But you can check check that track a plan amendment website or that track a nomination website. We will also have an, a map uh, as we've done in the past that that you can go to an interactive map that says here's a here's the here's the county and here's where the nominations have been submitted. So you can go and look you know, geographically sort sort by plan. You know, Planning area can sort by uh, supervisor district to kind of see see what's going on you know, kind of in the area that you're that you're interested in. So we have a lot of ways of getting the word out, um, notification um, notification wise, uh, not just for those that want to attend, but those that are just kind of following along. So a lot of ways to get in, involved. Okay, thank you. 
Sure. Uh, Mr. Clark. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for holding the meeting. I had a series of small questions. You're using acronyms. You're using SSPA. I assume that specific site plan amendment. Is that correct? Site specific plan amendment. Yes, sir. Site specific plan amendment. Could you uh, define site specific? Is sure. It one parcel. Is it a group of parcels? Contiguous parcels? Please define it so we know what we're talking about here. Yeah, absolutely. So it can be an individual site or a collection of parcels. Um, I think the the distinction is that it's kind of at a parcel level of aggregation as opposed to like a whole area such as I don't know which area of the county you're, you're, you're interested in, in particular, but think of it as like a, a site along Route 7, for example, between Bailey's and and uh, and Seven I'm Corners, for example. The, next to the Vienna uh, Vienna Metro. Okay, so okay, so for example, it might the site a site specific level of analysis might be the Metro um, the Metro site. It might be what Wamada owns in particular, compared to all of the land units that comprise the transit station area. That's that's the kind of the difference. You mentioned that the plan amendment, you must have the uh, permission of the owners. Yes. On that amendment. So there has to be 100% consolidation. Is that what you're saying? Correct. So one of the things that we have with SSPA is that you have the property owner's signature requirement. So if you're not able to obtain the property owner's consent, you can still submit the nomination. And so if you have one, uh, we, we would encourage you to work with the property owner, you know, obtain their, their signature. If you're not able to, you can still submit it. Um, what I would just say is that we flag those that have not obtained the property under signature for that December the 6th uh, board action item so that the board member knows, you know, this hasn't met um, that 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 thing, but they're still able to consider adding it to the work program or not, or excuse yeah. me, adding it into screening. Now. So thank you Ver, for that clarification. That's mm -hmm. an incredibly important clarification because what I was hearing you say is that there had to be a 100% consolidation for a plan amendment, which hardly ever happens in the county in the past. Um, the next thing is you referred to the board being able to reject plan amendments. Um, what board? We're talking about board of supervisors. You need to define what you mean by board. Sure. Yeah, I do mean the, the board of supervisors. Yes. The supervisor. OK, great. And what is the role of staff in this regard? Uh, are they are they judging these things purely from a a, a planning standpoint, or are they going to allow political input by members of the Board of Supervisors before the process even begins? So in other words, can a, a member of the Board of Supervisors come to you and say, I don't want to hear this issue. I want the staff to kill it before it ever reaches the board. Sure. So what we what we look at when we're doing the evaluation, um, and this is during during the screening phase, is we look at it from a policy standpoint. So from the staff standpoint, there are some some proposals that we you know look at and we say you know what from a policy standpoint there isn't support you know this is proposing something that's so out of, out of whack in terms of our existing countywide policies or something that's inconsistent with the area-wide studies um, that we we don't think that it should proceed for a further review in contrast there's going to be some where we say you know what this this has some has some merit to it from a policy standpoint but that's the the core of it we do interact with the the board members we do talk to them about what's come in so i want to make sure that's 100 percent transparent uh, but from our from our review, from our recommendation, it's based in the in the policy of the comprehensive plan. If I seem a little antsy on this point, I plan I submitted a plan amendment in 1994. It was a 100% consolidation, which hardly ever happens in the county. It was a request uh, for a, a, a plan designation consistent with the neighbor, new neighborhood in behind us, so okay. that the new neighborhood could have an entrance to their new neighborhood that looked like their neighborhood instead of these older houses. Uh, initially, uh, the, the planning staff agreed to it and expanded it by about three or four fold. And, and then down the road, politics got involved and it was rejected out of hand without explanation, virtually without explanation. So I'm hoping this will not happen again. Okay, I can't speak to the specifics of your proposal since you know it was in 1994. I'm I'm happy to to talk with you though, um, if, you know, in a separate discussion if you'd like to, sure. to talk more about it. What forms do I use? I mean, yep. I have all of my materials from. Uh, excuse me, that I it's 2004, not 1994, 2004. Okay. I have all of my materials. They're ready to go. 
Okay. What That's form the next... do I, I mean, I could put this thing together in two hours. Yeah, what, you bet. So what form I, do I use? Absolutely. So the next part of the presentation is going to be going over exactly those materials and the form and everything like that. So well, okay. I'll... have they been prepared or? Uh... Yep. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll show them to you in just a minute. Okay, I think that 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 covers it for now because I, I, I'm I'm going to be submitting the same proposal I did in 2004. The difference being that there's a new subdivision that has been built uh, with 83 homes, who all are going to be wildly in favor of this proposal. Okay. So, okay. Excellent. Well, um, yeah. Look look forward to talking to you more about it, Mr. Bernie. Go ahead, Bernie. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Graham, rest of staff for putting this together. I really appreciate that. Uh, you, apologies if you already mentioned this. I might have missed it, but when do you anticipate providing the nominators or the community a better sense of what, how a, a nomination, if it moves forward onto the work program, will be administered? Will it be during a staff report? leading into the PC workshop or towards the board action as to if this moves forward onto the work program, it will be prioritized at this point and it will re it will be reviewed in this manner or this manner. When do you expect the public to know at what stage how a, a nomination will be administered? Absolutely. So we'll, we'll be planning to do a preliminary staff analysis with a recommendation, preliminary staff recommendation in advance of the community meetings. So uh, look for that early January. And so that before we go out to the community, we'll have a preliminary staff recommendation on which should be, which should from staff standpoint, should proceed for further review onto the work program. Um, after the community meetings, we will we'll, we will have that, that staff report, if you will, which contains our final recommendations on the nominations. We kind of have, you know, preliminary, get the, go to the community, get their community feedback, and then if, um, and then we'll have the, the final staff recommendation you know, following that. So uh, look for that in early January. Okay, and um, one last question. Will there be opportunities for the nominator to consult with staff after the nominations have been submitted for clarification or yes. um, just, you know, smooching? <laughs> for clarifications, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yes. Yeah, there, there, there will be opportunities and if you have any questions, well, each nomination will be assigned, you know, a, a, a liaison, a planner that's kind of going to be the, the main point of contact. So we'll make sure that you have their contact information and you can, you know, you can speak with them. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? We um, we do have about just time check. We've got about 30 more minutes. Um, and what I wanted to do is get to what, I, what I've heard from a couple of folks on the call is getting into the the details of how to submit a nomination. So, um, Melissa, go ahead. Hey, thanks, Graham. Um, I wanted to follow up, and I apologize if you're about to cover this. Um, mm -hmm. So, so please let me know if if that's what you're about to get to. Um, but I wanted to dig into what you're going to be looking for in that statement of justification. Is yeah. that what you're about to start covering? Okay, that's one of the things. Yeah, absolutely. Great, perfect. Thank you. Sure. One second here. OK, so getting into. Uh -oh. So next, want to give you that snapshot of the nominating process, um, specifically the information that is going to be required to submit a nomination um, in the nomination form. That's going to go late, live later this month. We're also um, just about to publish a guide to the nominating process and how to fill out the form and everything like that. So. Just look look for that. We'll send out a, uh, a list of announcement you know, announcing that we have the, the the guide and it's been published. So you can take a look at it uh, and have something to review in further detail. Um, one thing, kind of right off the bat, um, we've gotten a couple of questions about plus. So one thing that um, most most of you all that are aware that have kind of been following along with um, with DPD's um, application uh, submittal uh, process. We, we use a new system called PLUS. We are not going to be using PLUS during the nomination phase or the nomination forms. The reason is that there's an outage uh, for PLUS kind of in the later part of October. And so we've developed a separate online system for the whole of the nominating process. We will not be using PLUS for nominations this round. Uh, instead, we're going to be using, an, an, it's, a, it's an ARC product, an ArcGIS product, uh, but it's a, it's a survey 
it's it's it's, a, it's similar to kind of like a su survey monkey um, or a public input form. Essentially, it's a survey um, where you're able to upload information. So um, we have a, kind of an online form that's an alternative to Plus um, that that we'll that we'll be using. All right, so let's go. First of all, L SSBA eligibility. Um, one thing that we'll just mention, I can send a link link around to to those of you that are interested. Um, most areas of the county are eligible for SSPA um, in this, for this round. Um, the, the areas that are not eligible are areas that are subject to a currently pending land use plan amendment. So that's a, a, a study that's looking at a specific land use change uh, to an area. Um, the areas, another criterion is um, have the areas been included in a planning study that was adopted by the Board of Supervisors uh, since October of uh, 2020. And then um, also just a couple of restrictions. Um, nominations cannot propose to, to directly change a countywide system, uh, such as the transportation networks, uh, trails, bikes, uh, parks, public facilities. They need to be dealing with a specific land use change. Um, and then finally, we're, um, there's a restriction. One nomination may be submitted for a specific land area by the same nominator. Um, so if you have, um, you can have multiple nominations across the county, that's fine. Uh, but for each land area, we're looking for a specific nomination for one one idea essentially for each for each area. All right, so getting into the nomination uh, form. So this is kind of a snapshot of our of our form that we're that we're developing. Um, start with basic information. So the nominate once you've determined that your site is eligible, you know proceed uh, proceed to the nomination form. Um, we'll ask for your name as a, as the nominator, uh, basic contact information, so address, email address, phone number. In most instances, we'll use email address as kind of the primary means to, to contact you. So make sure that you have a, an email address. If you don't have an email address, uh, we can just note that in your statement of justification um, and uh, enter enter a phone number as your primary contact and we can contact you that way. Um, in terms of the nomination, um, the nominated properties. So what we're gonna be asking for in the nomination form is the tax map parcel number, as well as the street address for the nomination uh, site. So. If you don't know the tax map parcel number, we have some great tools, one of which I can show you in just a minute for how to obtain that information. And if you have any questions on how to how to get this information following following this discussion, happy to, to walk you through our, our online uh, online mapping tool called Jade, uh, which is a great way to uh, to get, get an introduction to the FX Canvas GIS system. Um, so we'll be asking for um, additional information regarding uh, the supervisor district in which the nomination sits. Uh, if it's straddling across multiple supervisory districts, you, you'll be able to enter that. Um, it's basically a checkbox. Um, and then some certain nominations may be what's considered a neighborhood consolidation. Those have a specific um, they have a specific requirement in the comprehensive plan. So in some instances, um, those 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 submission requirements, you'll, we'll, we can work with you to just make sure that you have everything that you need um, as is, as is provided in the comprehensive plan for those specific types of nominations. Um, but we haven't forgotten about those. Just wanted to mention that. And then, as I mentioned, we do have a property owner consent requirement, and so we'll have a we do it. We already have on the, the website a template um, property owner notification letter um, or uh, submission letter, basically saying I am the property owner and I consent to participate in the SSPA process. And it's it's on the website now. I can send you a link to it. All right. Um, one thing that we are going to be asking for is a map. Uh, so, this is, so this is a requirement. And this map should show you know, the property or the properties that are subject of the nomination. So the map can be generated via Jade. Uh, this is our GIS public facing GIS tool. Um, just basically, you'll, I, I can show you just after we get, get through these slides how to use this, but basically it shows you how to go in, how to click on a parcel, how to draw uh, you know, around specific parcels and select, select those and print a map. And then you can send it to us saying, this is the property that, that I'm hoping to, uh, hoping to nominate. It just helps us to have a, another point of reference um, in addition to having the list of addresses as well as the tax map parcels. So um, that's important for us, especially as we go out uh, to the community, make sure that we have the right, uh, the right property and it's been, um, and it's been nominated. Um, Jade is also a great tool because it contains a lot of pertinent information related to the property. Um, so as you're doing research on the property, it can also tell you the comforts of plan map designation and give you links to the comforts of plan text, um, gives you information on zoning, Parcel size, environmental data, a lot of additional information about the nomination that can help inform inform it uh, and can be useful as you go about you know, considering putting in the nomination. All right, the the 
existing plan and the proposed change. So this is kind of the meat, the meat and potatoes of what the nomination is supposed to be all about. So one of the things that we will have required in the past and will require is that you provide us with the current comprehensive plan for the site. So whether that's a, a site specific recommendation today or it's something that's related to the sector plan, you know, something at a higher level of aggregation, we want to know what does the comp plan say for your specific site today? And in, in, in looking at that, what is the proposed uh, change to that designation? So we'll ask for the text. Um, if it's something that's very large, if it's you know, multiple pages, you can just send us, um, say, C, C attached, and we'll have a, an upload a document where you can upload you know, a PDF of that specific relevant section of the comp plan. Um, in terms of proposed land uses, we'll ask for the current, um, the, the proposed change. So in terms of you know, the, the land use change that's um, kind of writ large, what you're proposing, whether it's uh, hotel use, mixed use, residential, industrial, commercial, et cetera. Um, and then we'll ask for kind of a summary of the proposal in terms of you know, what, what is being nominated. Um, mixed use proposals, they, they'll need to you know, specify in a little bit more detail what's being, uh, you know, what exact land uses are being proposed. Um, you, we will not require um, density or intensity calculations. If you have them, we'll, we'll accept them, of course. Uh, but that's not a requirement at this stage. And the reason is that we're going to be uh, instead requiring a concept plan. And so that'll be a, a plan that visually depicts you know, what the nomination, how it could be arranged, on, how, how land uses and development on the site in line with the comp plan recommendation that's being proposed uh, could be arranged. All right, so this is getting to, to the question about the statement of justification, what we're going to be looking at. So the statement of justification is a, a page or more that describes you know, exactly what is being proposed in a little bit more detail and what the nomination should um, will entail. So in terms of how staff will review these, these are the, the criteria, the justification criteria that are listed right here that explain you know, what, what are we going to be looking at in terms of which of these nominations are ones that we think sh from a staff standpoint should be advanced for further review um, or should be screened out. And so these are very important in terms of our, our criteria in terms of looking at the nominations and considering a bunch amongst the batch that come in, which ones should be prioritized. So we're looking for nominations to explain um, how they meet each of these criteria. So how do they address an emerging community interest or a change in circumstances? Um, how are they advancing the objectives in the policy plan? So that's the countywide uh, comprehensive plan in the area plans, sector plans, for example, um, the concept for future development, um, just making sure that the even even though there is a change to the comp plan that's being proposed, making sure that it's not contradicting longstanding county countywide policies or policies that are inconsistent with the the larger area. Um, beyond the comp plan, we are asking for nominations um, to explain how they are aligning with the goals of some of the board's other adopted policies. So, such as the recently adopted strategic plan, uh, the one Fairfax policy, community wide housing strategic plan, if applicable, ec economic success plan. Um, these sorts of things. So you don't need to um, just look at the comprehensive plan in terms of providing you know, justification for your nomination. You can look to these other uh, board policies as well. And then lastly, um, if the if you have um, a, a a timeline or kind of an explanation of the prospects for the implementation of the nomination, that's the, that's important information. We want to we want to make sure that that information is included in the statements. So that could be information if you have a you know if you have a developer that's you know, hoping to submit an you know, submit a development application following the review of the nomination, we want to know about that. We want to understand you know what their timeline is, um, so that that can feed into the discussion about prioritization. Um, we also want to understand has there been community engagement that the nominators have done in advance of the nomination period. Uh, it's not a requirement. We just want to understand you know, are there community uh, community members that have been engaged in the past. Or should be, you know, if there's specific stakeholders that should be in, involved uh, early on in learning about that, that information as well. Illustrative concept plan. So a couple of you have asked, um, you know, what 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 should we include in this concept plan? So here's an example that uh, Mike Linsky with our with the Department of Planning and Development put together for one of the nominations um, in the South County. So this is kind of an, an illustrative example of you know, what what a concept plan could look like. Uh, it need not look exactly like this. Um, this is it's at the discretion of the applicant in terms of how much detail they want to provide. A um, couple of things that we are going to be kind of looking for, you know, property lines and dimensions, streets, parking areas. You know, how how is the site access, for example? What are the structures on and around the site? Um, and then if there's specific features, environmentally sensitive, natural areas, we're gonna, I see those you know, where they're where they're going to be identified. Um, and then on-site amenities, you know, on-site uh, open spaces, parks, recreation areas. Those, those are the kinds of things that we'll be asking 
you know, the, the concept plans to include as um, as plan elements. All right, and so I can walk through before I before I demo Jade, um, I can answer any questions that you have regarding the submission requirements. And I apologize if people have been putting things into the chat I can't see, so I'll look to that first. Um, is there a specific, as Stephanie asks, is there a specific opportunity to meet with staff about a specific application either before the nomination is submitted or while it is going through staff screening? Uh, yes, I think at, at this point, if you'd like to meet with with staff, we, uh, we we're not able to really talk about the specifics of any nomination. Just we want to make sure that we have, you know, the, the, that there's integrity to it, to the process in terms of letting it play itself out. But we're happy to answer you know, general questions. And if you'd like to, to schedule a time with us, um, just let me know. Um, Let's see questions. Mike, go ahead. That is a quick question for the um, sort of the online or sort of plus substitute thing. Um, mm -hmm. Is that going to open on like the day of the nomination period opens in early October, October, or is that going to be open in advance and we can start like loading stuff in and just not submit until the nomination window? Good, good question. I'm hoping to be able to do it earlier so that people can get a, a real actual feel for the form. I can show you the, the version that we have right now, um, you know, as a part of the, the, the training, so to speak, but I'm hoping to be able to send it, get, put it live and maybe so that you can't actually submit it until October 3rd, um, probably in, in advance. Um, so yeah. I'm not sure yet, um, but if it, we're able to, yeah. yes. If that's possible, I mean, I think that'd be ideal just so we can yeah. sort of tee things up. Um, Either way, but, we'll have the guide and the guide will be exactly all the things that we need, you know, in the form. So I, Graham, I would like Graham, to be able to do that in advance if we can. For sure. Graham, Graham, this is Megan. Um, I think the part of Mike's question was about uh, starting to fill out the form and possibly saving it for individual nominations. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I, that's not going to be possible. Um, okay. uh, so, you know, you can write it up and save it in a Word right. document or something <laughs> like that. But uh, in order, we don't have the capability right now to to have the nominations as draft saved into the form. Okay. Yeah, no there's nothing to log into, unfortunately. So no, that's okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Good question. Then. Uh Melissa. Uh, Melissa, can you hear us? You're muted. All right, we'll come back to Melissa. David? Thanks, Graham. This has been great, very, very helpful. Um, you know, a lot of work went into getting David, us David, we can't hear you. Are you able to hear me now? Yep. Go ahead. OK, I uh, just saying thanks. This has been great, and I know a lot of work went into getting here now. Question about the illustrative concept plan mm -hmm. that. Um, this is a comprehensive plan, so it's a guide and generally we're not going to. I'm anticipating the end result is not going to be a comprehensive plan that has draft layouts as part of its adoption and understanding you're not asking now for FAR or dwelling unit, you know, calculations. Um, how is the concept plan then going to be used to then create the plan text? Like if we do have someone who is ready to go in and mm -hmm. knows what they want, is it helpful to include a tab on the concept plan knowing it's you know maybe above the minimum submission or yep. um, is it really supposed to be just a high level visual and you what level of detail is you know think of it yeah it's, it's a good question i think think of it as this is the way that development could occur on the site if there's something that if there isn't a development application that's ready to go that's you we're you know, you're ready to submit a rezoning immediately following the conclusion of the planning process um think of it as this is the way that the statement of justification statement of justification in terms of the proposed change could be arranged on the site not should because I think that the should question is what the planning process is for. It's like this is this is the way that you're proposing, you know, townhouses and we would previously have requested you specify, you know, four to five dwelling units to the acre or five to eight dwelling units to the acre. Instead, we're more interested, what's the feel and the the kind of the arrangement of space of uses on the space? How could that work? And I think that that's more important for the screening phase discussion than specifying out it's got to be exactly six to one units the acre or, or something similar to that. So we're hoping for something that's illustrative of what could happen and what could take place given the information that the nominator has. Um, but it's not something that it, it, it's something that we would then want to use as kind of a jumping off point for the evaluation phase 
um, because it's kind of the, the initial submittal, so to speak. I understood a kind of quick follow up there, mm -hmm. pivoting that to the community meeting. Do you anticipate, have you thought, I mean, it really is, I know, going to depend on how many nominations you received and how you can structure that, but do you anticipate then that the nominator would be presenting? Is it going to be staff? Yeah, um, we think both. Yeah, so we would like for both the nominators to present. You know, it's their concept, so they'd have the opportunity to present. And then staff would also, because by that point, staff will have produced the preliminary recommendation, so we'll want to make sure that we can explain that to both the nominators as well as the community. Um, you know why we've why we've taken a specific approach from a policy standpoint. So yes, and and that that applies to not only the community meetings but also at the planning commission workshop. Thank you, sure. Kevin. Hi, right, thanks for the presentation. Um, I had a question about eligibility requirements. Mm -hmm. Um, so Rustin is currently going through a comp plan amendment. Yes. And can you clarify is is the, is Rustin Parcels in Rustin still eligible for SSPA or they're not eligible for SSPA because they're going through a current comp plan amendment. Let me show you the map. Um, just one second. Uh, most of Rustin is eligible. There is a there are a couple of uh, there's a collection of parcels that are in the Wheelie TSA um, that are ineligible because they're being considered as a part of the planning study. So let me just pull that up real quick. The vast majority of resting is eligible. Okay, so here's our eligibility map. And so the areas in red are areas that are ineligible because they're either they're subject to a current study or they are they were a part of a, they were air, land areas that were subject to a planning study that was adopted within the past two years. And so the vast majority of resting is eligible. Um, okay, just and just then for that. there are specific areas where there's where there's being a, there, there's a change in terms of land use density or intensity or land use mix. And those are shown okay. here on uh, Sunset Hills Road, but uh, otherwise, okay. the vast otherwise, majority okay. of residents are eligible. All right, Thank, that's very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and Veronica. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so I just had a question about the property owner signatures. Um, mm -hmm. Are we, so if an applicant is the property owner or the nominator is the property owner, do we still need to submit a owner's consent form? And also, are we required to submit originals um, as copies, well? Copies are fine. Um, what I will, here, I'll show you a copy of, we, we did a, a sample consent letter. It's on our website now. I'll send you a link to it. Um, but if whether you're the the nominator or the or the property owner, whether they're one and the same or if they're different, that's okay. Nominators are typically not the property owners, but um, in cases where they are one and the same, uh, we just ask that they provide a letter, and it looks something along the lines of this. So you have this this kind of a template. You just provide the date, um, provide the the address of the nomination. Note, you know that I am the owner of this property located here. Address and tax map parcel. Um, I consent to. Uh, this uh, a nomination being submitted on my property uh, and expect, you know, and understand the expectations of the process and will participate. Um, owner signature, um, name, etc. So we would ask for this for each nomination. I'll, I'll pull it down into the chat so everyone has a copy of it. And then once again, um, to, to James's point, if you don't have the property owner's consent for every nomination or for every site, uh, you can still submit. Uh, we would just we'll just flag that for the board members when they take action on December the 6th on whether or not to accept or reject, just saying that this is one where we didn't have, you know, the property owner's consent for each property. And so that's that um, you can still submit that. So I want to make sure that's clear. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. There's your property owner consent letter. OK, and. Melissa, did you? Yeah, are you able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, okay, great. Um, sorry about that earlier. Sure. Um, so when you were talking about the statement of justification, you mentioned a page or more, and I've seen before that it said between one and two pages. So as you were as you were going over those four bullet points, which looked consistent with what was in the in the white paper report, I can imagine just because of how much is in th those policy plans, how much is in the comp plan. That each of those bullet points could take a page um, pretty pretty easily. Um, so, are you looking for just a very high level 
um, justification or do you want to to get into the weeds and get you know a full scope of of what is being proposed here which is more important the brevity or or understanding the project i guess i think it's more more the latter trying to understand you know how the nomination is consistent with the justification criteria in most cases with south county for example one to mm -hmm. two pages uh, in some cases a couple more was what was necessary to to you know to get a real sense of how the nomination uh, of what's being nominated we don't that's not a requirement that it be one to two pages it can be more um, if you feel okay. the need to provide additional information to make sure that it's clear on how to meet the submission requirements you can um, but generally generally one to two pages is sufficient um, but if you want to provide more you absolutely can gotcha thank you Graham mm -hmm. uh, Nick Hi, Graham. Uh, just, I just saw that eligibility map. Is that available somewhere or is that just something on your end? Just so we have it, access. Yeah, to it. it is. I have access to it right this second. We're going to launch this out with the guide later this week. OK, perfect. Thank you. Sure. All right, let me do. We've got about uh, eight Graham, minutes. This is, so um, sorry, Graham, this is Megan. Um, can I just make one more point? Um, hello, everyone. I work with Graham in the, the Department of Planning and Development. Um, it, just in case people drop off before you do the Jade demo, yeah. I just wanted to reiterate uh, the, the point that was made earlier about the nomination window, uh, because there was a there was a question about clarification and um, and how whether or not staff can can talk with um, the nominators to clarify the the amendments. You know, the 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 reason that the nomination window is a month long is so that you know there's ample time to put nominations together but also because um what we're what we're going to be doing is as the nominations are coming in uh we'll be um uh, reviewing them as they're coming in and on a rolling basis and um reaching out to the nominators as soon as we have a chance to look over them uh because um we just, you know if there are a lot of nominations uh, we won't have a lot of time for those clarifications uh, once the nomination window closes, so uh, certainly one of we are we are absolutely encouraging nominations to be submitted um, on the earlier end of the nomination window if possible, uh, so that we do have that extra time. I don't think we have more than a couple weeks for that clarification period because we have to get to the board by December six. So please, uh, you know, if I can, if I could just reiterate, please try to submit. Uh, the nominations on the earlier end. Thank you, for that, Thank you Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So let me show you a couple of things in Jade. Um, Jade is, again, a very useful tool for all nominators, um, as well as members of the public who are interested in following along with um, uh, with, with planning and a writ large in the county and looking and doing research. Um, one of the things that we have with Jade um, is this ability once you've determined that your site is eligible um, in the eligibility map you have this ability to go in and look up uh, information regarding the site that you're interested in so i'll just do a kind of a demo example of how to uh, search for a property create a map and then also look up um, some information regarding the current comprehensive plan recommendation for your site so um, i'm i'm at the uh, i'm at the the, uh, the excuse me, the, the Harity building. <laughs> I was going to say the Benina building, but I'm at the Harity building uh, right now across the street from the government center building. And so I'll just do a demo based on that site in particular. So when you're in Jade, which is um, linked in this in this presentation, um, you have this ability to search for an address. So I'll just enter the address for the government center building uh, that I'm in right now, 1205, 1205.5 government center parkway. So you go in there, enter your street name. You also have the ability to to search by parcel. Um, so if you have have you have if you have a parcel number already, sounds great. Do not enter um, uh, hyphens or parentheses. Use spaces instead. That's how this system works. So search. That'll zoom you into your site of interest. And so if I was interested in looking up information regarding this specific site, I could click on it. And that will give me the ability to generate a parcel report. And so from that parcel report, that'll give you a couple of things kind of right off the bat. Um, first, it'll give you the supervisor district in which it's located, uh, the subdivision, some additional information regarding the land area, so acreage, for example, 
Um, it will give you the owner's uh, property information. So if you don't know the, the owner of the property that you're intending to nominate and you want to contact them to get their signature, um, this is the mailing address that we have on record for them. You know, that's not parcel, um, or excuse me, in our, in our tax records. Um, additional planning and zoning data, so zoning, um, if there's a zoning uh, overlay district, and then also get into the comprehensive plan recommendations. So every site in the county has a base plan designation. So in this case, um, the government center building, uh, the parity building is uh, the base plan is for public facilities. And then it has additional information regarding plan area, the district and the sector. So that's kind of looking at the, the area plan recommendations for this site. Um, there's additional information in Jade as well. If you want to look up environmental uh, information, look for, for example, is there an RPA on the site? Like, is it in a flood zone? Things of that nature, you can do that as well. Um, so once you once you have that information, you can click on um, you can click on the the sector information and, and navigate to the comprehensive plan via that route. Um, in this instance, with um, with this site, um, it's located in the Fairfax Center area, and so this is a link to the comprehensive plan. You can click on Fairfax Center area. And then in my instance, I've kind of already pulled it up, so it's it's kind of ready to go. But um, the the site that I'm interested in is located in subunit B2, and so that is the the, the most appropriate recommendation um, that you should include with the comprehensive plan nomination. Um, it's the uh, the sector, uh, excuse me, the subunit plan for subunit B2. And so what we'd ask is that you copy this information into the, the nomination form, uh, explaining that this is the existing comp plan recommendation. And this is the basis for which we would like to see you know, the, the proposed change. So use that as the base and explain you know, what what would be different you know, in the, the nomination compared to what's in the comp plan today. So that's using Jade kind of in a nutshell. If you're interested, in, whether you're interested in doing one site or multiple sites, um, you can make a map. And so I'll explain that. Go into your drawing tools. And in the drawing tools, you have a couple of options in terms of how you might arrange uh, arrange a, a polygon. I'll do a custom shape just for demonstration purposes. Um, whether I want to do the, the you know the Heritage building or also include all of the buildings that are kind of in this area, it, either way it works. So I'll just demonstrate this right now. You click on the, the area that you're interested in. Highlighting the area doesn't have to be completely exact, but we would like to have a good sense of which parcels are included. Just kind of roughing this out, obviously, on the fly. And then that will generate a shape once you double click on it to close the, the loop. Zoom out a little bit just to make sure that you get a sense of the area. And then you go to I want to, which is this option right here, and click create a printable map. That'll give you kind of the extent of the map. And then from there, you can say, I want to do, this is my test nomination map example. And you can click print. And it'll take a couple of seconds to generate a map, but it will give you something that you can then send to us. Uh, so you can download it, uh, print it out, and include it with uh, the nomination form. So you click on open file. And that gives you your map and then whatever you had described it as in the earlier module will come up here. So we, if you have a name for your nomination, you can include, a, include that on the previous page and it'll show general location in the county as well as kind of a more zoomed in image uh, that's, that's drawn to scale. Um, so if you have any questions on that, I've got about 30 seconds left. And again, we're going to be doing a series of these um, tomorrow and on Thursday as well. So if I wasn't able to answer a question, um, today, feel free to attend tomorrow, or if you'd like to email me individually, happy to talk um, individually. Uh, if you have a specific nomination that you wanted to, to discuss or any specific process changes. But um, while I have you, Lynn, Lynn, also good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, but go ahead. I think you got probably another 30 seconds or so. Okay, just quick question. You had mentioned that it's possible to, to submit a nomination without an owner's uh, statement or mm -hmm. acceptance. Um, I'm just curious uh, if a nomination were submitted without an owner's um, agreement, but had resounding community support. Uh, I'm just trying to understand how that would sit with county staff and and in moving that nomination forward. Thank you. So, in terms of whether or not it should be included in screening or not, we wouldn't have anything to do with it, <laughs> um, be, because yeah, I, I mean truly. So we would flag it. You know, if something mm -hmm. didn't meet that requirement, we would flag it for the board because they're going to have that December six board action item uh, on right. whether or not to accept or reject. You know, the the list that comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, 
given that there's essentially a month to clarify anything uh, and then to see whether or not they're they're deemed acceptable, you know, eligible for the process and whether we have everything that we need, we won't have time to do any sort of policy dive into these uh, in advance of that action. And so we don't have anything to do with that discussion of whether or not something should be advanced for further review or not based on its ability or inability to obtain the property owner's signature. So it, it will it's 100 percent at the board's the board's prerogative. Okay. So to speak. okay, great. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing this as well. Sure. Oh yeah, no problem. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all again. Um, my name is Graham Owen. I'll drop my contact information down into the chat. And if you want to contact me, uh, feel free to. And if you have, um, if there are folks that you think would, would benefit from this presentation, we are doing them at lunchtime tomorrow, as well as on Thursday, uh, the same thing. Um, so we'll be happy to, to chat with them. Um, but thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to, to seeing nominations coming in in just uh, about a month. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Bye, take care.